All right, so this is going to be a quick tutorial about using InfluxDB. So I'm going to assume that you already know what time series data is. You've come to InfluxDB. You just want to get started. Great. So let's quickly go through some of the differences between the different versions, just so that way then you know what you're picking, basically. So you have V1, which is our oldest version. Uh, V1 is still maintained for security purposes. It also has InfluxQL as its querying language which we'll get back to a little bit later. Then you have InfluxDB v2, which is the currently most recent open source. It's also maintained for security purposes, and it uses Flux as the query language. The reason I'm talking about the query language is because it is important for when you're using it, but also when you wanna integrate with other things, not just InfluxDB, because it is a database, so normally we do expect you to integrate. And then finally, there's InfluxDB v3. Now, I know this is saying InfluxDB open source versus InfluxDB 3.0, but I'm making this video at a time when we're still working on our 3.0 open source. We will have one. I just don't know exactly when. I just want to be clear about the difference between those open sources and everything else. So I actually suggest most people start on cloud serverless. That's kind of where we're going to be going for this demo because it's free. You can just get started on it. It's very easy to get started. You don't have to scale up your own stuff. You don't have to run your own hardware. You could just get going. You do not need a credit card. It's nothing like that. Just get started. That's why we're going to use it for the tutorial because it's just very straightforward. Not that running open source is per se difficult, but not everybody has the hardware or know-how. So then you have things like dedicated and clustered, which are more for our uh, larger customers. That's why it says things like request a proof of concept. They're for people who, you know, require it at a larger scale, basically. But we're going to assume that you are just, you know, a single individual looking to get started on InfluxDB, super straightforward. We're going to use Cloud Serverless. So I already have a Cloud Serverless account, so I didn't need to create my own. If you do want to create your own, it's pretty simple. You just basically click Start Now, and mine will just automatically log me in because it already knows me. But otherwise, for you, you would create an account. Again, no credit card required, nothing crazy. It's just creating an account, super straightforward. The first thing that you're going to do when you set up InfluxDB is you're going to set up a bucket. So a bucket is, for all intents and purposes, it's a database. It's where the data is stored. You can see it over here where it describes it. Uh, and the reason that we call it buckets is because it has something called a retention policy. Now, just like most people on watching this video, I won't have the never delete because I'm on a free account. I haven't upgraded. So you can store your data for up to one year. Um, it's just going to depend on how much you're storing as to if it will cost you any money. But you can also store it for if you want something like 48 hours. And you go ahead and give your bucket a name. So I'm going to call mine tutorial bucket. Great, so now I have my tutorial bucket. This is all alphabetical, so it's gonna be down here underneath my test bucket. Perfect. I am upgraded enough that I'm allowed multiple buckets on the free account. You normally only get, I think, two or three. So then you go ahead and you have your sources. So you have things like file uploads, which are a little bit tricky and I'll go into in a separate video. You have client libraries, which are probably your most straightforward and probably what we'll use for this tutorial. If not, we'll use Telegraph. But basically with this, you do something like for Python, you get your uh, dependencies installed, pretty straightforward. You grab a token, which we can come back to, but basically it authenticates for you. Uh, this token is an all access token because it doesn't know which bucket you currently want to use for it. But so you would normally want to create a token that is specific to your bucket. It specifically has read and write requests just to that one. Then you do things like initializing your client. So you have things like uh, basically saying what organization you're a part of, the host, for me that's like the URL above. Uh, some people are going to be in, you know, US, US West or in our EMEA region. So yeah, you pick your tutorial bucket and then down here you can see an example of what they'd be writing to our database with this simple insect census data. So it's basically just saying how many uh, insects are within these regions and which kind they are, whether that be bees or ants. So this here is explaining some important concepts that come with the data. You basically have things like a measurement, which is the primary filter for the things you are measuring. So for example, our measurement is census. It could also be called something like bugs census, if you wanted to be a little more clear, or insects. Uh, then you have tags, which are your key value pairs to store the metadata. So for us, those are specifically the location. Yeah, the, so for us, yes, the location is our metadata. 
and then you have fields, which are the key value stores that are the actual data. So with this, we're storing things like the actual insect species and account, which is our value. So what this is suggesting basically is that we just copy this to our clipboard and we go ahead and run it in our Python shell. That would go ahead and send it up to our database. And then when we're done with that, you can go ahead and try this and make sure that, you know, everything is correct. Um, right now, obviously, it's not running, so it's just awaiting the connection, and it won't find it because we're not there yet. Then you can execute some uh, SQL queries. So this is what I was talking about when I was mentioning earlier that there are different querying languages. So in our v3, which is why I'm excited when we have our v3 open source, it will all be in SQL. And SQL is uh, not as powerful as InfluxQL and Flux were, to be clear. It's definitely not as powerful of a language because those were meant to do more. But it is more interoperable with the wider ecosystem. There are a lot of programs out there that expect to be able to query in SQL. And when they can't query in SQL, it can be quite a tricky thing to get your data out of the database and into something else. It's basically just a lot of Python cron jobs where you're just pulling the data out and shoving it somewhere else. And it's not always great. So that's why we have switched over to SQL. But basically, when you're querying out for our serverless product right now, this is what you would do. You would say something like query, select from census where the time is basically the past 24 hours, and bees is not null, or ants is not null. Basically, don't give me anything back that is a null value. So you execute that query. For us, we're also um, converting it to a pandas data frame where we can sort the values by time. And you would see this roughly. This code snippet above should basically print out the data wrote in the previous step. So this is all pretty straightforward. And then this is something that's more like an aggregate query. Aggregate functions basically take all the values of those rows and tables and do an aggregation operation. So that could be something like, as you see here, a mean. So we're basically asking for the mean for the past 10 minutes. And when it comes to our Python client in particular, you can actually switch between InfluxQL and SQL. But nowadays, we have quite a lot of aggregate functions within our uh, SQL capabilities. And if you click on this, it will actually take you uh, to, that, um, to the documentation that will talk more about it. And then finally, it's very excited when you finish up this process. And it gives you more options, things like integrating with Superset, integrating with Grafana, all very helpful very useful. Now something else I didn't get to mention yet was Telegraph. So Telegraph is one of our most popular ingestion agents. So I'm going to do a separate video that's going to go into using uh, Telegraph, InfluxDB, and Grafana together. So if you are interested in that video, I'll go ahead and put a link for it. If that's what you're thinking you're going to use is Telegraph, uh, which just a, an FYI, every Telegraph client is slightly different. So just do keep that in mind when you start using them. And then for us, let me go ahead. I already have a file set up and ready to go. It's actually going to go into, let's first make an API token over here. So as you can see, I have lots of API tokens, uh, some of them quite old actually. Uh, basically, what you're going to do is you're going to click custom API token because you don't want an all access unless you truly are, you know, just using this for a home project or something or you just don't really care and that's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and call this tutorial bucket token. Great. One thing to note, once the token disappears, you will never see it again. So go ahead and grab it now. Uh, I mean, worst case scenario, you just create a new one, but still. Okay, and then this is a file that I've already worked on. So I, for the most part, my org and everything is going to be exactly the same. My DB is changing though. Okay, so I've updated my token. I didn't want to show anybody because I have some other secret stuff stored in there as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and call this, really hope I'm spelling the word tutorial right here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and run this. And basically, this is taking advantage of the exact same Python client library that I just went over. It's just already set up for the, uh, basically just to make this a little bit faster. Okay, looks like it's running. It looks like we're getting some flight data. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. Uh, it costs me a little bit of money when I run this, so I don't tend to run it for uh, hours or anything like that. All right, so then we come back into here, go back to our buckets, click on the tutorial bucket, and it will take us to the data explorer. 
So in here, you can turn off the SQL sync if you desire, but I'm gonna leave it on just to make my life easy. You go ahead and pick that. It's gonna pick the uh, interval that's down here. And then from there, I can go ahead and click run. I'm gonna pull that off to the side a little. There we go. And I can already see some of my uh, information here. I could see things like the altitude, my aircraft type, destination airports. All of these are things that I had already, uh, you know, basically predisposed to put the data in here. This is all pretty standard. Somewhere around here is also gonna be our time. Yep, there it is right there. There's also our time value. So yeah, this looks perfect. And I actually already have this hooked up in Grafana, which I go into in a different video on how to do all of that. But basically, this is just a straightforward way of using InfluxDB. Uh, in the Data Explorer, you can do things like save this. So you can save the script, put a description in, and then you can come back and open them as well. And you can switch between SQL and InfluxQL for this versioning. Also, if you want to learn more, please go ahead and when you come onto the main website, you can go here. This is our InfluxDB University. It will go into, we have a lot of on-demand courses here that will kind of go into things like schema best practices, enterprise, uh, telegraph basics, all these awesome uh, you know, courses. Most of them are under 30 minutes. Some of them are closer to an hour, just depends. The Influx CV Essentials course, for example, is quite long, but for the most part, most of these are pretty straightforward. And yeah, I really suggest checking them out. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description.